today we are looking into an interesting subject matter entitled the African the African challenges the African challenges and so I will, I will again try and think through the challenges if you have time you can be having this stick in the back of your head the challenges I'm going to be addressing are actually speaking to this to the to the to the stick but I want us to take an African leader and I want to take him through through the African the African leader and I want to question the African leader according to our thinking tool where is the African leader if this is the mind of the African leader how is the African relating to his Africanicity how is he relating to the principles of Ubuntu how is he dealing with the Chinese problem how is he dealing with the Western problem and how is he dealing with the technologies that are coming from the north follow me very carefully so you you pick up a problem like we have right now which is the African presidents the African leaders in our country we simply want to ask our African leaders four basic questions as an African leader how are your principles what principles are you using for governing your countries as African leaders are these principles African principles number two how is the African leader dealing with the Chinese problem which is that from the East pillar number two how is the African dealing with the influences of the West and how is Africa dealing with the technologies that are coming in from the North so you can look and you take your president you take your country and try and pass it through there is your president thinking from this direction to that direction or your president is thinking from this direction to that direction where are the people of the African continent on this walking stick is he thinking from hand to mouth or is thinking from his stomach or he is thinking from the future to the present so I want us just to take African presidents and my conversation for today will be taking the leadership of Africa and I want us to process them and see if our presidents and if our leaders can go through this test and they can pass this test boom so let's get started the first problem that I find with our African leadership is what I call they lack an African identity our leaders lack an African identity they lack the depth of understanding what is Ubuntu even if they may be able to speak well about Ubuntu the next question do they practice Ubuntu in terms of their governance and remember every country is as good as its leader is so firstly we want to start finding out if our African leaders really understand what Ubuntu stands for and if they understand it in terms of a philosophy and a principle are they able to practice are they living are they ordering their lives and their governments and their programs are they speaking to the social network the social foundation of Ubuntu the African president again while we are on it he lacks Ubuntu the African president he comes around dressed up in a tie and a jacket looking like some small little colonized African leader who is imposing on us the principles of the North who is taking our money from the African people and giving it to the West and right now he's taking our money and giving it to China and the African people are suffering at the perils and at the hands of our own leadership our leadership is not thinking from Africa to the world they are thinking from the world to Africa therefore their relevance is not relevant to the African people they are relevant to their colonial masters they are relevant to their financial masters they are relevant to their commercial and trade masters the African people remain as an offering in the hands of the African leader the African leader lacks the African identity he lacks the African spirituality he lacks the African business principles African business principles of how do you run a business as an African which can benefit first the Africans take note ladies and gentlemen when the African is thinking like this what will the European say what will the Americans say what will the Chinese say I will talk to the Africans they are my people they will understand the Chinese the Indians the Americans and the Europeans 
think like this america comes first if you hear donald trump talking i like some of his speeches america comes first the rest of you go to hell and find the closest lake where you can jump and drown yourself as far as the american president is concerned his people are a priority if one american is trapped in baghdad if one american is trapped in japan if one american is trapped in iraq the american government the army the intelligence and all the resources of the country will go to that country to find that one american person who is trapped the why because the american government understands that our greatest asset are not the things that we have but the people that we have the all the other countries the chinese their own their own welfare is fundamental it is primary the chinaman comes first the next bus stop to the chinaman where can we get our resources that's where africa comes into place and how does this benefit the chinese third question how do we deal with the americans and how do we deal with the europeans because they have taken themselves as the primary subject and the primary object of the conversation our african president need to understand this stick and i wish on your next gift if you have access to one of them please buy them one stick and introduce them to the principles of farmers of thought and the principles of aim because many of them are suffocating in those ties but their brains are more suffocating than their necks are prioritize your people understand where you are so the african leader does not think like this he thinks like this his people are at the end of the conversation they are never at the beginning of the conversation the african leader lacks not only the ubuntu he lacks the spirituality he lacks the business knowledge he lacks the technology follow carefully he lacks ubuntu he lacks spirituality he lacks business knowledge he lacks technology europe gives us technology the west gives us the money and the banking china gives us the spirituality which now right now also in terms of business and machinery they're doing very well but the african leader finds himself in deep deficiencies for when he is leading a people he's not leading them into ubuntu he's not leading them into spiritual maturity he's not leading them into business self-sustainability he's not leading them into manufacturing their own technologies all these things i'm talking about the african leader will constantly be importing machines constantly importing debt constantly importing from china constantly abusing taking the resources of his own people and giving to other people while his people are languishing in problems another problem we have with our african leaders our african leaders suffer from a disease a horrible disease a disease of lack of sense of time our leadership has a problem with time it looks like they have watches in their hands but they don't have time on their minds what do i mean by that they don't have an idea of what was in the past in fact some of them have forgotten what happened for them to get into power they drive through the communities and see the graves of the dead soldiers who went to war to fight for the liberation and instead of them honoring the blood of those that died for liberation they have forgotten about their past the african leader has forgotten where he is right now in a vicious business environment where dogs are eating dogs and he goes there for the meetings with his girlfriends booked in expensive hotels when meetings are running he's fast asleep and snoring the only time he wakes up all in favor say i i 
and they raise up their hands and they disappear from there. Our African leaders don't have a sense of the past where we are coming from. They have lost the sense of the present where we are right now. And I can tell you honest truth, our African leaders don't even have a clue where their countries are going to be in the future. As long as I am president now, as long as I am your leader now, that's all that matters. And the plans that they are designing in the present, some of them are not going to be relevant in the future that we are moving towards. Look now with the crisis of Corona that we have. We have governments in Africa that are so stubborn that even when you see that things are changing, you still find it difficult to adapt your system so that it can speak to the projects of the future that are coming upon us. So the African leader does not only lack Ubuntu, he also lacks a sense of time. He does not know where he is coming from. He does not know where he is now. He has no clue of what will be happening in the future. In fact, he will not even be there in the future. He will have died long time ago. Number three, the African leadership lacks what I call a moral compass. A moral compass. The moral compass must say, my people come first. My people come first. The African leader does not have his people at heart. He has himself, his family, and he has his friends as priorities. I will not mention a name, but one African president, not very far from here, was head talking the other day. It's none of my business what the people are doing. I am working for my family and my children. A whole president of a country, a whole president of a country on a national TV. You can Google the, the clip for yourself. I will, I will not mention the name. He says, I am not worried about anybody. I am here also working for myself and my family. And that president takes the economy of the country and he makes it his own economy to benefit himself, to benefit his wife, and to benefit his children. That's being immoral at the highest order. Our African leaders lack moral compasses. The moral compasses not only to preserve the nation, some of our African leaders, in fact, to make it worse, they will not understand even principles of intoxication, principles of contaminating of the environment. They'll still go ahead and approve projects. Some of them are agreeing to deals where toxic waste, poisonous atomic toxic waste is being dumped in Africa. And the whole president will agree that the Chinese, the Europeans, and the Americans can bring their tanks of junk, junk, toxic junk, and pump it into our minds, into our grounds. And when those radioactive materials are put into the ground, they contaminate the ground, the crops, they contaminate the water the people are drinking. Before you notice it, in Congo right here, you still find miners from Europe who are still cleaning up gold in Congo using mercury. And that mercury is being washed into the rivers of Congo. And the people down the river are drinking the water that now has the toxics of the mine that is there. And drink as long as the president of the country is receiving his 2%, 3%, which is being banged in Europe, he does not care about the people that are living on the sides of the river. I don't call that morality. Our African presidents, some of them are immoral. Let's agree, guys. There's nothing here. It's not a war. They are immoral to the highest order that you will not even care for the people that you claim to be ruling and you would allow such 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 toxic such human degrading activities to be happening under your watch with the department of health department of environmental affairs department of this even with their advices this will not work honorable president but because you have received your money and you have received your cut it does not matter Immorality is high. Not only lifestyle immorality, but mental immorality. Our presidents and our leaders in Africa, they lack moral, moral responsibility. Not only moral responsibility, they are vandalizing the community. 
They're vandalizing the space. They invest, take the money from the country and invest it in other countries. I mean, if you are a smart thief, at least if you have stolen our money, invest our money at home so that it can create employment for us. Look at Amini. Look at Mobuto Sezeseko. With all the billions that he moved into the banks of Zurich and Switzerland. Right now, his own children are struggling to access that money. And the European government is refusing to pay back that money. Because the contracts in which that money was given were not very clear. And it's not, it's not a shame to say Zurich and Switzerland and some of the Norwegian countries in the world are benefiting from the stolen money from African people. And they come around and say, we are donors. We have come here as Swedes people. We have come here from, no, from Norway because we want to donate money towards the poor people of, of Africa. You are not bringing any donations. You are just bringing us the change from the money that the African leaders stole and it is sitting in your banks. By now we know. You send us to school. We understand the politics. There is no donation that is coming to Africa because even in the donor money that you are giving us, you are still expecting us to pay it back in one way or the other, if not in services. The other day I heard there was a company in Zimbabwe which was volunteering to be digging boreholes for people. I will not mention the name. Digging boreholes for people. And people are so excited. Oh, these companies are coming around giving us boreholes for a very cheap price. They did not know why all these boreholes are being dug. The same company that was digging boreholes was taking samples of land, samples of soil, and sending it to their basic country, telling their own countries how many minerals are on each ground. So every borehole that was dug was actually a mining exploring permit. And our own African presidents are busy getting fat, buying big cars, walking in straight lines, standing in United Nations, putting on those small little stupid European suits as if they are small little boys who have been captured in a quarantine mine of a slave trade. I have no respect for such. Lack the moral compass. They don't build businesses that are sustainable. They build businesses that have them as principles. Even sometimes when a deal is supposed to benefit the country, the leader will not want the project to go through before he approves it. And you must go and wash the hands of the big man. Then the project can proceed. People are drinking dirty water. Sewage water is running on the streets. I'm not embarrassed. Today I can say it loud and clear. Case study, Zimbabwe. Case study, Zimbabwe. Municipality in conversation, Harare. The powers that are running Harare municipality, MDC. The head of MDC, Chamisa. You can send this clip and cut and give it to him. I met with the man who was working on the water project in Harare. And water project in Chivero has all become sewage water. A man walks up there and says, I can clean up Chivero Dam and restore the water system in Harare. How much money do you need, sir? He does his mathematics. He needs 9 million US dollars to fix up the water project in Chivero Harare takes up the paper, walks up to the, to the city council and says, there is my quotation. The MDC municipality in Harare takes the paper with 9 million. They sit amongst themselves. They concoct and cook the same invoice and put 60 million. The same man is called to come to parliament to present his budget. When he walks up to make a presentation, he is given a budget now that has 60 million US dollars. He asks MDC. So the other 51 million that now appears on paper here, who is that money going to? I wish Chamisa himself can walk out from the closet and answer this. Because the people are drinking dirty water in Harare. The project can cost 9 million, but he wants to collect 60 million because they must share the other 51 million amongst themselves. And as long as the water is dirty in Harare, the Zimbabwe ZANU PF led government must be seen to fail, though the municipality is being run by MDC, which is conducting corrupt activities under the table to prove that the ruling government is not legitimate at the expense of the local people. 
I don't call that morality at all. Sometimes you must know as African leaders when to do politics and when the people should come first. On that basis of the water project, I can declare on this station, I can say it on any day, I have names that I can give. If Chamisa wants to disprove this, if the Honorable President Mnangago wants information, I have the information, but it is clear that people in Harare are drinking dirty water because Chamisa and his cronies, they want an extra 51 million on a project that can cost 9 million for the people of Zimbabwe. Fair, fair, you know. And you're busy doing slogans. You lack the moral obligation to do what is right, especially when the people benefit. Put your own interest in the back foot. Let the people come first. You cannot do politics with our stomach. You cannot do politics with our health. You cannot do politics with our hunger. You cannot do politics with our children. You cannot do politics with that. If you want to do politics, play in the political terrain. But when your political interests are now tempering with the health of the society, you must know that your moral compass has fallen off the radar. And what people are you going to be leading after all of them are suffering from diseases which are caused by the dirty water they are drinking? African leaders lack morality. And I wish anyone who is listening to this clip, please cut this clip and make it available to MDC, make it available to ZANU-PF. I am not politically aligned to anyone. I have nothing to protect. I have nothing to fear. All I am telling every Zimbabwean at home and away, the water situation can be solved. But MDC has inflated the budget. And until the 51 million is in their hands, the 9 million will not be released so that Chivero Dam can be cleaned and people can have clean water. That's a fact. You want information, you can inbox me and talk to me and I'll give you names and contacts and you can have the information for yourself. Number five, our four, our African leaders, they lack comrade support, camaraderie support, one from another. They are all working in their small little silos and they have not yet learned the power of unity. If there's any problem we have in Africa, the biggest of them all it is called lack of unity. We don't have consolidated, friendly environments where leaders can meet together and have conversations on how to solve problems. Between Zimbabwe and Zambia, there's a big river that flows there called Zambezi with water that is enough to water the whole of Zambia, water enough to water the whole of Zimbabwe and Botswana and some of it even into South Africa. But our governments will spend years and years with a problem of a country that is suffering from drought. I wish I was in power. It cannot cost me too much to walk up to the Zambezi River and dig up a canal that starts up from Wanki, running through Wanki, through Lupane, through Bulueo, through Nkai and Gwanda, finally pouring into Chiredzi and into the greater Limpopo. And wherever this canal is going, irrigation schemes can run through. We need nothing much. Go to Chiazwa, dig up some few diamonds, fill up a bucket, walk up to Aravep in Belgium, sell the diamonds for crying out loud, come back with 16 billion, take the billion, dig up a canal and water the land. Let people have food. How complicated is that? When leadership does not have basic thinking tools, we overcomplicate things that can be done simply because we lack the support one from another. Right now, trucks must be driving all on. Thank you very much, Honorable Mnangagwa. Thank you very much for finally signing the treaty of allowing Zambia and Zimbabwe to have a bridge so that goods can move across the bridges. People must struggle on horrible roads to move the goods through Zimbabwe and etc. And while we were busy dragging our feet, Zimbabwe would have been benefiting from being a transport route between Congo and South Africa with the goods. But our roads have become bad. Now all the trade is moving through Botswana into Congo and Zambia and it is gone. We have lost time while we are busy doing politics. We lack support one from another because that border was very critical between Zimbabwe, Botswana and Namibia and governments would spend 20-30 years 
Should we build the bridge? Yes or no? Should, should no we can't no we can't the political situation is not right no the politics is the politics is, people must spend two weeks three weeks sitting at the border waiting with goods to cross over on a simple thing walk up to our borders you find trucks packed from messina to the other side on any day waiting to clear and this is business that must be running because we have put bureaucratic systems that delay the whole process of business while we are talking about unemployment while we are talking about goods and services they are rotting at the border because there must be corrupt border officials there must be corrupt immigration officials there must be corrupt police officials and at every roadblock you must be paid you must be paid how are we going to build Africa when this big hall of corruption and hunger and thirst for illegitimate money is getting wider and wider by the day. Our African leaders lack support one from another to create express borders where goods from South Africa to Zimbabwe to Swaziland to Mozambique to what? Goods must move. Let the people live. That's how business is run. How do you think America is making it? That 52 countries, 52 states agreed to make the United States of America. You can start from Nebraska up into Chicago, Michigan, Detroit, past Washington, D.C., come down to Florida. It's one big, huge country. You are free to move with goods. Let businesses run. That's how you build superpowers. It's not by individual powers. It's when various states come together to make and form one big state until Africa can unite and create a trade zone where you can keep your politics and your passports but allow the business borders to begin functioning so that goods and services can move between countries and countries and industries will strive in a non-restrictive environment particularly if it is African businesses problem number five some of our African leaders lack common sense common sense Common sense, what do I mean by common sense? The simple common sense of how do you convert your resources into industries and materials? How do you convert your raw material into industry? So I'll again use Zimbabwe as a case study or South Africa this time or let me use Zambia as a case study. Or oh, let me use Nigeria as a case study. How can it be now for the past 40 years now? How now? That Nigeria, you are the highest producer of cocoa. Yet you import chocolate. May I ask please? Especially those of you who are clever and more clever than me. Can you tell me how do you become the highest producer of cocoa and yet you are importing chocolate? Have you not understood up to now that the cocoa that you are producing makes chocolate? And to, to, to tomorrow, from yesterday to tomorrow, you still don't know how to convert your cocoa into chocolate. You have not found it as important to create a factory at home that produces the chocolate. You are the, one of the highest producers of oil, yet you still import your oil. Zambia, to date, one of the highest producers of copper. You have not yet found a way and a recipe on how to produce and make products out of the same copper that you are digging from your own ground. I come back to South Africa. One of the highest producers of uranium and platinum. Have you ever asked yourself the question, this platinum that we are producing here, where is it going? And what are they producing with our platinum? Why can't we make industries that convert our raw materials and resources into the final products? By so doing, we are creating employment and creating industries. Where? Help me, good people. How complicated is that? How complicated is that? The other one was telling me the other day, no, Maponga, you cannot say that because you don't understand. Maybe it's better because I don't understand. You don't need to go to school to understand that when you have platinum, you can make the products out of platinum and sell final products of platinum. 
You don't need mathematics as a Zimbabwean to know that the lithium we are producing in Bikita, which happens in my home village, in Bikita, that lithium can be used for making the batteries which are being used for cell phones and etc. Why can't we have an industry that produces the batteries as final products and sell them to China and the rest of the world? Why sell raw materials? This is what they did not understand with Mugabe, which I'll say again. There's no mineral which must leave a country without beneficiation in that country. By beneficiation, we mean convert the material of a country into a final product and if you as a government you are the biggest brother in the house buy the industries buy the machinery buy the factories and put them there that when the minerals are dug you can convert them into the resources that are needed that's how you create what you call parastatals parastatals are government businesses which help the leakage of resources to other lands because your own people, the black people, don't have enough muscle right now to build an industry for 200 million. But you have it as government. Then build it for us. And we'll bring the raw materials to you. Beneficiate those minerals. If it is gold, make the rings. If it is diamonds, make whatever they make with them. If it is platinum, make what? If make the battery. Make. You cannot tell me we produce iron in Zimbabwe. Up to date, we cannot make a block of a car. A car. A simple block. A block where you take iron and, and pour it in a cast and there is a block there is a body of a car to date we cannot make a car but Zisco steel is full of iron ore which the Chinese now are here are busy digging and moving back to their countries they will come back as Hyundai they will come back as Toyota they will come back as Hong Hong and Hong Hang and etc and we are happy to be importing these things into our own country when we are selling the raw materials from our own land I call that national immorality of the highest order when we lack this small little word common sense common sense common sense Another problem we have, the last but not least, is lack of vision. Where our governments are not planning beyond 100 years. They are not planning beyond 200 years, 300 years. They have a 5 year plan, 3 year plan. If you are lucky, 15 year plan. If you are lucky, 20 year plan. That will never see the light of day. It's just projects and plan that are on paper. We lack vision. And ultimately, number last, our African leaders lack accountability. Accountability to themselves, accountability to their people, and accountability to the nation and the continent at large. We are stuck in private politics while Africa is going to waste. There's no better time to talk about this than now. That in the midst of us developing farmers of thought and this organization called AIM, we want to develop people we have a strong sense of identity. We want people with a strong sense of time. We want people with a strong moral compass. We want people who understand their role on the greater African political terrain. We want people who have common sense, who seek support from one another. We want people who can see the vision of another Africa 400 years from now. We want people who can be accountable to themselves, to their families, to their communities, and to the continent at large. Aim African indigenous movement towards the construction, the reconstruction, and the deconstruction of colonialism to building the new Africa that we want. Until we meet you again tomorrow, same time on your afternoon drive live with Maponga J, broadcasting from South Africa on your African channel, where we are discussing African politics, African science, African medicines and technologies, dealing with African problems and finding those critical, critical African solutions. Until we see you again, we wish you all a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful evening and a wonderful afternoon. Don't do what I wouldn't do. If you do it, do it better.